Hey. Hello, Liana. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Better now. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> so uh, on March 16th, you you guys uh, were like number one movie in the world. Uh, how does it feel? <laughs> It's crazy. It's so, so crazy. I mean, I knew that the Scream fans showed up, but this was like the coolest thing in the world to see. I mean, I know that um, I like felt a lot of excitement around the movie, but getting to like see it, I mean, I went to opening night too with my friends and getting to experience like the energy and the theater and stuff was like crazy. It was so cool. So cool. Did, did you watch uh, the, the, um, the 4D ver version of it? No, I didn't. I need to because I had already. No, I think I, no. I that's not an excuse. I was like, did I did I not know about the like 3D thing before? And I was like, no, I think I did. I um I need to do that because I've never had a movie in 4D or anything before. So I'm like, that seems really cool. I need to I need to go see it. Although I've seen the movie like five times now. So So I think I need a little break. <laughs> I went to, to watch in 4D like two days ago, and I it was the experience. You you, you must do it. It's fun. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Fun. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do it. I love your whole like setup. That it looks. You look like really yeah. sick. Uh, some of my favorite items are here. Uh, this one is signed by Wes himself. It was sent to me years ago and um, uh, uh, it's the thing is the thing that it's here is my office and I just come here and <laughs> every time it's like amazing. <laughs> to, to, that's to see so it. cool. I love it. It's really, really cool. I love all the posters and that's so cool that West signed that. I feel very honored to, to be here talking to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Of course. I'm happy to talk about it. I'm so like proud out of the movie and I've obviously like watched and followed your commentary since I signed on to the film and I like I mean I love that's like the best part of the job is like getting to talk to people who like like the movies you're doing so that's awesome <laughs> well, um, so uh, before before uh, before screen uh, you've been in a scary movie called Haunt right uh, oh yeah And uh, recently, Dig. I don't think Dig is would be a horror movie. It would be more like a thriller, right? Were you a fan before it? Uh, yeah, I do love horror. I I also did this film called The Beach House, which um, I really loved doing as well. I I do find myself gravitating towards horror I, i i also feel like um it's a really hard genre to nail um and, and so i like to watch a lot of horror movies because i'm like okay let's see i i always feel like the third act like makes or breaks a horror movie so um so yeah and i also just feel like it's um as an actor it's just really fun to get like just really like gritty and screaming and bloody and sweaty and I I like not very often as a human being do you get to act like like super primal and um and so I think that I've always gravitated towards like that like unhinged behavior I think that that's just a really fun thing to get to let your body do and um But yeah, and then I just, yeah, I just love horror movies. So it's fun to get to be in them. <laughs> it's a necessary question. Uh, what, what's your favorite uh, scary movie besides Scream? As of right now, um, one of my favorite scary movies is It Follows. Um, if we're talking like current scary, you know, like more n new scary movies. Um Yeah, I really, really love that one. I also love, um, I love Signs. I think Signs is a really, really good one. I I find it really fascinating how little um, M. Night shows the scary thing. And he just like builds up this anticipation and this fear. And 
it's really inspiring as someone who comes from like a lot of indie movies because when you make indie films, it's really hard to find a budget to show like the big scary monster or anything like that. And M Night does like a great job at just like building this tension without actually showing you the scary thing. Um, and like really focuses on like the fears within a family and a town. And so that I would say is like one of my older scary, scary movie favorites or like Rosemary's baby is a really good one as well. Um, but yeah, I would say like current it follows. I think that's a really, really creative storyline and, and they, they did a great job on the third act. So, <laughs> and bringing it follows, it has sex elements on it and your mm -hmm. character is uh, sex positive as, as she said, it's one of my favorite moments in the film uh, that, that, that part when you are, I, I laughed so hard on, on that, uh, on that moment, uh, with Mindy. In the 80s, uh, sex was equals death. And uh, a lot of uh, has changed since then. Uh, Sidney Prescott was a character that had sex in the film and she didn't die. What, what do you think that changed in the talk about sex horror movies in society since then? I think that was the big, a big draw to me wanting to play Quinn was because there is this sort of like stereotypical trope that follows like, you know, what you would call like the slutty character or something like she's always the one like running away and she's in the short dresses and she's screaming and after like making out with her boyfriend or him sneaking into the room, you know, there's always those like tropes. And one thing that I loved about Quinn was once again, Scream just being, like, so aware of all of those things, um, they kind of, like, lean you in and kind of force you to believe that this is sort of the storyline that you're going to get from Quinn. And then, you know, obviously, like, there's some turns. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did a spoiler thing that I... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> spoiler alert. Sorry. But um, that is something that I like is that it, you're kind of flipping like a trope on its head and someone who um, acts as if they're being sort of like devoured by their emotions and their like sex drive is actually like this really calculated, calm, still driven person. And I liked that. I was really drawn to that. I feel like not a lot of horror movies lean into that that much. So um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously Scream 6 does a good job of that. <laughs> and, and, and what's your favorite archetype uh, in, in horror movies, you know, uh, the, the type of character that you like the most, that you most enjoy seeing in a, in a scary movie? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I, like, I really like anyone in a, in a horror movie that's able to, to like, make people laugh um so like the kind of the like clown i think in movies and, and scary movies i think that that's um i think that's always fun because especially in an like when you're in an audience and you're you're watching something that's really really scary people like long for like a little bit of a laugh and um so yeah i normally like one of my favorite lines in six is um when Ghostface is attacking Chad and he like knocks the mannequin over and Chad's like beheadings and I just like that just cracks me up because it's just so like like you're like Chad like why did your brain go there like you're literally fighting for your life and it just like makes me laugh but stuff like that like I like characters that are able to lighten the mood for like a split second before you get back into like the nitty gritty of the storyline. Um, so yeah, I think that's my favorite. Queen herself is, is one of those characters. Then I, I think we should like enter the spoiler section right now. <laughs> okay. I already ruined it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How is it going from uh, the, the, the character that is the comic relief to the villain? Uh, how, how did, it's did so fun. Out? It's so fun. It felt like I was being handed two different characters in one movie. Um, and I think I, 
I definitely toyed around with the idea of, you know, because I think a lot of ghost faces, especially because for Quinn, like Stu Mocker is her, is her favorite ghost face. I was like, okay, you could, you could lean into like this really zany, crazy, delusional ghost face. And I definitely toyed with that idea, but I, I do feel like uh, Quinn is presenting sort of that version of herself in the beginning, you know, um, silly, loyal, sassy, like you kind of do see notes of that. And then I thought, I was like, this is an opportunity to play someone like a lot more calculated and um, angry. Um, So I decided to lean that way. And I felt like the lines that were written for Quinn kind of catered to that as well. Um, And also she's just really mad. She's, she's, she's hurt. She, she's, she's trying to get back uh, at Sam with what happened to Richie. And um, it's this sort of like visceral boiling anger that's inside of her. And I think I wanted to lean in more in that direction, which was really fun. And I felt very different than the Quinn that was presented to us in the first two acts. So um, yeah, it was, it was really a really, really fun time and not very often as an actor, do you get to, are you presented with basically two characters in one film? So that was really cool. In what point did you, did you learn that that would happen? You know, I discovered it when I was already in Montreal. Um, and I was in my fitting. Um, so I think it was like a day or two before I started filming. Um, and obviously we didn't film, we didn't film the last act until, you know, probably two, two and a half months later. So I had plenty of time to like think of things and let my imagination wander. But I, um, yeah, I was in my fitting. I tried on all of my clothes and, um, and I remember the wardrobe was like, okay, I think we're, we're done here. You can, you can leave. And I was like, okay. And I remember being like a little sad too, because I feel like some of the best parts of being in a horror movie or a screen movie is like, you either want to be final girl, you want to have like a crazy epic kill, or you want to be ghost face. And I was like, dang, I didn't really get any of that. Um, And I was sad, but then I was like, it doesn't matter. This is like the coolest thing in the world. And then um, I was stopped right before I walked out and Matt and Tyler were on zoom. And they're like, Hey, we actually have like one more thing for you to try on. And they brought out the ghost face outfit. And I was like, <laughs> I can't imagine what my face looked like. I was probably very confused because I'd only read the first two acts and I, I it was dead. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> they were and they were like we'll explain everything to you but like just surprise this is crazy and I was like what and I got to try on the outfit I have a video of it that eventually I'll post of me like trying on the ghost face fit for the first time um but I was in complete shock I couldn't believe it and then um right when we were filming the scene where I walk in on Chad and Tara um I got to sit down with Matt and Tyler and they were able to like explain everything to me, um, which was so cool. And then I kind of got to dive straight in and like, we got to do so many different like notes and colors of the scenes. And um, then you just sort of like trust Matt and Tyler to pick what, you know, what level of scary calculated Quinn are you going to get in each scene? Um, So that was really fun. Um, and how how was the casting process of of it? Did, and did you audition just for Quinn or another characters? I did audition for Quinn. Yeah, I um I didn't know I was auditioning for Quinn, but I um I received an untitled Spyglass Paramount movie audition right before I left for a, a vacation and. I, it was a very short two page scene. It was sort of a version of the scene between Sam and Quinn. Um, like right when you first meet Quinn and like, I remember the, are we being too loud line was in there and it sort of captures like the like front facing, like essence of Quinn, the, the like ghost, uh, not the, um, 
what's the word? The dummy sides um, sort of captured that um, essence of Quinn. And I, I was like, oh, this is easy. This is like two pages. So I, I put it, put it on tape, sent it, sent it out. And then like a couple weeks later, I found out that Matt and Tyler wanted to do a reading with me um, for Scream 6. And I was like, when did I audition for Scream 6? I don't remember that. <laughs> because it was untitled when I had originally read for it. And, um, and so, yeah, I got to, uh, like a week or so later, uh, they sort of spliced together a, um, scene, the scene from Scream 5 where, um, Richie and Amber, like, explain, um, their motive for being Ghostface. And so they, they put a scene like that together and I got to do that, which was really, really fun. Um, and, but I did find out that they had read, I didn't assume that that meant I was ghost faith because I found out that they were making sure they were having every character read that scene. So, um, I know like Devin read that scene. I know Josh Segura read that scene. Um, and so I was like, Oh, okay. They're just like trying to throw us off. Like we don't, you know, throw us off the scent. We don't know who's going to play ghost face. And, um, and so, yeah, I, um, that was just really fun. And Josh and, or, I'm sorry, not Josh, um, Matt and Tyler were like so sweet. And I just remember their like little faces in the Zoom camera and they were like smiling. They're like, okay, great, thank you. And, um, and then, yeah, like I, the, I went through like an excruciating week of waiting and then I found that I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm really happy. And the internet just, it's really happy that that you to that you got the, this part and and you are ghostface you know i don't know if you have read any comments um, but how was uh working with radio silence and did you get some great lasting direction tips from them mm -hmm. they were amazing um i remember obviously being like a fan of the scream franchise and i also went to go see Scream 5 in theaters. Um, I remember thinking to myself how well they sort of refreshed the franchise. Um, and I also grew up with Dylan Minnette. And I um, had sort of heard whispers of how much fun he had with everybody on set. and. Um, I remember walking out of Scream 5 being like, gosh, I would so love to be a part of a family like that. I just have heard so many good things. And then it just, everything unfolded, which was crazy. And I immediately felt so supported by them, which I think is really important when stepping into a franchise like this, because there's a lot of pressure and I know that they feel it. I mean, they want to do justice to, to this, to these movies. They care so much. And, um, something that I really admired about working with them was you knew that there was pressure, but you never saw it or felt it with them. They, they just wholeheartedly trusted the people that they handed this opportunity to, and it felt so collaborative. Um, and it makes you feel like so valued when you're on set. Um, and yeah, there's just this immense amount of like peace around them and, and confidence, um, and so much fun. Like they are just really, really good, good people. And I think that that's something that I'm going to carry with me moving on to other projects is like carrying that, that peace and sort of, you know, I, I, I certainly hope that I can surround myself with more people like radio silence. Um, it can, it can be hard sometimes i mean i think that making movies there's a lot of pressure and you're fighting against the clock a lot and they just did a really beautiful job at honestly hiding that 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 pressure and that um and that just feeling of like oh my gosh we have to make the best movie ever and you know, i hope people like it they just um yeah they navigated that seam seamlessly and and i i uh, seen some interviews from the other uh, cast members, uh, especially from from the fifth one, and uh, they they say a lot that they, uh, the radio silence 
uh, lets you like bring things from your personal uh, life to the characters. Have you brought? Have you bring anything from 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 you to Queen? Obviously, uh, you always do that as an actress. But uh, anything in particular? I'm trying to think. I really hope I don't share many qualities like of Quinn because she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy um, part. <laughs> aside from the crazy part, I do feel like um, I do embody uh, uh, like bits of the like sassy, silly friend, and and she does give off like a, a, a big sense of. I mean, she is an incredibly loyal person. Um, and I, um, I do find that, that, that I, you know, especially as an actor, when you're playing someone who like is a little unhinged, you have to find those like little tiny pieces that you can relate to. Um, but I can't really think of anything else that I brought as a piece of myself into Quinn. Again, it, it did feel like super collaborative though. Like I, um, there was one one thing that I really loved. I was um, I wore this tree necklace like the in, the entire film, and uh, that was cool because it felt like I was like keeping a little secret, and it was directly like in front of Sam and Tara the whole time of like this family tree and this like much broader connection to the story. Um, so that was that was fun. It, it was nice um, getting to collaborate on these little Easter eggs throughout the movie that only I knew. Um, or like that only Jack knew. Um, so that was pretty cool. Jasmine, she she had a badge on the first film, you know, the the LGBTQ uh, badge that she used. She brought to 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 her dark film. Oh, did she? I didn't even know that. Yeah, and it was the coolest thing, you know. And she appears with that in the poster. She That's really really cool. I I know too that in the um. She, um, I mean, rest her little soul, she had a, a cat named Zoa um, that was, uh, I think, with her while they were filming Five. And um, Zoa got to make a little appearance in Six as her phone's background at, on the subway. And that was really sweet. I know she really wanted to feature Zoa, which was cute. Remember that I was very sad because I have two cats. Do you have any pets? <laughs> no, I'm dying to get a cat though. Eventually, I'm I'm dying for an orange cat, like an orange fluffy cat. So I'm on the lookout right now to rescue one. So hopefully oh, soon. Sleeping over here. Right? <laughs> I noticed. So cute. When when I have interviewed uh, uh, Radio Silence, she was like over here. <laughs> they uh, were like. Laughing all the time. She wanted to make an appearance. Sure thing, and I like her. She's a, she's a star. <laughs> she's really cute. What's your personal screen ranking? How would you put it from mm. your favorite to the least favorite? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so much pressure. I feel like I'm, people are gonna get angry at me no matter what I say. Um, let's. See. <laughs> Which am I counting six or am I not counting six? Sure thing, sure thing, sure thing. Okay. I mean, I'd have to, I mean, the original scream would have to be one. Um, I would say, I, I, I would say scream six as two, but I think I could be biased, but I think it's just so fun and, and, wild um and okay to i would say scream two probably there's a little bit of bias in there as well because i um because i i feel like there's a lot of notes of six and two you know i think they would like that answer <laughs> you do okay good okay you know you can't please everyone <laughs> yeah Okay. And, and and what's your favorite character uh, in the franchise? One of the favorite characters of yours? I really love Gail. I think Gail, it could just be too a lot of like getting so often in the last few weeks 
getting to feel the energy shift in like theaters when you see Courtney walk into the screen. Like she's just such a beloved character. And she does a great job at teetering the line of like comedy. She's so funny in these movies and she brings so much heart to it. Um, And I also feel like she's just an incredibly complex character. I think that she, she comes at, she comes into the film with like a few different agendas. And I think that's really interesting. Um, And and that's kind of a hard thing to play. So I, yeah, I would say Gail is definitely one of my favorites. This one is from Liberato Sources. Have you, have you ever seen this, this account? I I think that I have. Yeah, I you know it's funny. I don't really like I try not to get too too deep into the social media thing sometimes. Um but I do believe I have seen their account before and uh hello, Liberato sources or Liana sources or yes, whatever. <laughs> she was going to die. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. So uh, she asked uh, lots of interesting questions. So one of those was playing two villainous characters such as Lola from Dick and Queen. Which character do you think villain-wise stood out to you more while while reading the scripts? Mm. I mean, that's hard. They're just so they're such different characters. Um, I think that what I liked the most about Quinn was uh, as we spoke earlier like it just felt like you were dealing with two different characters um and I really liked that challenge of differentiating them um and then with Lola she just I think I think that she had um she was on a couple things or something (laughs) something was uh was miswired and misfiring in her brain and um like I don't I, I do wonder like how enjoyable killing people is for Quinn because I think that it's it's um coming from this deep rooted love for Richie. Um and you know I think that she would do anything and everything to avenge her family, but I don't necessarily know. I mean she's coming from a place of pain because her brother was murdered. So obviously she feels that. Um, so yeah, I think that that I I Quinn was just incredibly complex and interesting to to get to dive into. Uh, a huge question from from the the fandom that is: Do you think that Stu is still alive? <laughs> Everyone asks that. I don't think so. I mean, that's definitely more of a radio silence question, probably. But I have seen a few interviews. Um, from them and they're like we're yeah Stu's dead but um I mean you know what I would never put anything past the Scream franchise you never know how or why they bring a character back so maybe maybe not I wish I had some type of like hot goss to tell you guys but I don't I don't know anything (laughs) Um, who would you like to see uh to play Queen if she is in step nine in Scream 7 (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god like oh wow it would have to be a redhead who's a redhead would she be like played by an older actress or gosh i think who's a, a, a redhead a younger actress maybe like a sadie sink or something people have said that we kind of look alike um yeah maybe someone like her that would be fun she's an amazing actress too so that would be cool there's this question uh, that is how does it feel being the first ginger in this great franchise <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i think that uh, i'm honored i'm i wish i were an actual redhead because i would be more honored but um i i i am i think that's really cool i'm happy to be the first ginger <laughs> Another fun question here. Uh, ask her when she's coming to Brazil. Her gay fandom here is huge. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. I um, I don't know. I'd love, I'd love to go to Brazil. I've never been before. One of the things that I most adore about this this film in particular was is your account, 
uh, of uh, photos, the ones that you took. Uh, oh, yeah. Those are such, such amazing photos. I do like love how how you express yourself there, uh, and you can like feel a lot of emotion there in the in the photo. So, uh, what what is your favorite one from this collection that you took? I have one, but I haven't posted it yet. I I, I do. I have. Well, here, let me give you one. One of my favorites, actually, is one that I posted not that long ago. Um, it's the one of all of us on the couch. Um, this guy. I don't know if you can... That one. I love it. <laughs> I love that one because that was my, like, second day on set or something. And I was with everybody for the first time. And I remember being really nervous, like, I brought my camera because I love taking photos and capturing memories from my jobs and my travels. And I was, but I was also like, I am a part of a really big franchise that's very, they're trying very hard to keep things secret and private. And I really wanted to respect that. Um, but I had brought my camera and I was so shy. And I remember Jasmine being like, why are you taking photos? What are you doing? Like, take pictures. And I was like, well, I just don't want to like, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm scared. I don't want to make people nervous or anything. And she was like, no, this is ridiculous. Like, take photos, capture the memories. And um, I think that it, maybe it was her that handed the camera over to um, one of our, I think our AD. Um, and he like took those photos of us together and that to me like it was like such a validating moment and it made me feel more comfortable obviously getting to snap all of the pictures that I that I have and have yet to post but I think I'm gonna wait like probably until next week um I'm gonna let like one more weekend go through before I start posting the big spoiler photos um but there's some favorites in there as well Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, did yeah. you know, there's, a, there's a coincidence because Jack Quaid, <laughs> your brother in the movie, mm -hmm. he was the one that uh, took a lot of uh, uh, pictures in this kind of this the same style, uh, you know, the BTS uh, photos back in the fifth movie, and it was. Oh my gosh! It must be a family thing. It just runs in our family. <laughs> uh, so I'm really, really happy to have the opportunity of uh, the opportunity of chatting chatting with you and and uh it's been an honor and i do love your character in the film oh, uh, i do love uh getting in touch with uh some of your uh, previous works i have seen some of your shorts and uh i've seen like uh trust and i was like my god <laughs> was oh my god watching it <laughs> i know it's when 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 i saw that movie i was like my god this is uh th there is a, a great actress and i'm so happy that she's in the, my favorite franchise and and oh thank you <laughs> that really means a lot i i really appreciate that i really i mean I'm also like a huge fan of horror movies. And so it's really fun getting to come on here and like connect with like-minded people. It's really awesome. It's so fun. And I, and again, like I don't look a lot on social media just because it's, you know, a lot on the brain. But one thing that I um, like, you're such a trusted account and so respectful and I, I have, I love like turning to your account and getting information and commentary about the movies. It's really cool. So I'm so happy that we got to talk. Thank you, Thank you very much. And thank you. <laughs> See you next